being determined that no probable cause exists to file any charges against Officer Randall. This is my son. This is my little boy. It's been a while. Good to see your face again, bro. Man, good to see your face again. Yeah, the new, the new world, the Zoom world. Here we are, right? Yeah, I know. Last time we seen each other, we were in Toronto. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. So um, I guess we can get Seth Tosa. We can get started. I'm guessing. We good. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, man. What a, what a film. Like, uh, I mean, here you go doing the trifecta again. Writer, director, actor. I kind of want to do like a, a quadruple on this interview. I want to talk talk to you as a a friend, the director, the writer, and the actor. Mm -hmm. But um, first, I gotta say that when they have 12 angry men and they listed as number five on IMDb, I feel like this film is well, I mean, this, this film is better than 12 angry men for me. And I'm a film critic, I'm a cinemaphile. I love, I love films. And as I started the film, I had one idea of what it's gonna be. And I was kind of like, okay, okay. And then, and then the flip, and I don't wanna ruin it for anybody. Like, cause I think like that experience like makes the film what it is. Um, just made it so, so different. Um, so I, I gotta, I gotta ask you like, why, you know, first, why is this movie important now? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the interesting about this film, uh, as and you will know this as a black man that unfortunately, if I made it 10 years ago, it would be relevant. Uh, and the way we're going, if I made it 10 years from now, it would be relevant. Um, we are, mm -hmm. we are caught in a cycle where our bodies uh, are being uh, broken and, and destroyed on display and there's no accountability. Um, and, you know, What's that? you lose Where's that coming from? Your sound? Where's that coming from? You talking to me or are you talking I don't to me? Hold on. Okay. I don't think it's anything here. Jamal, what were you hearing, Jamal? Oh, uh, hold on. I'm gonna figure this out. Is there a program running? I'm sorry. I, I, I must have had something running in the background. I don't, I apologize for that. No problem. Uh, you were saying, um, as a black man, we, we all know like that this film could always be relevant. It, it is relevant in every moment. You know, uh, the reality is, is, you know, Trayvon Martin's father right now is mourning wherever he is. You know, Tamira Rice's mother is mourning wherever she is. Uh, and so as an artist, you know, adopting my nephew at, at uh, 14 years old and bringing him to a, a nice neighborhood and a nice school. And then him asking me when Michael Brown got killed, what do I do if I get pulled over on my bike? and not having an answer for him. And I'm someone that's plugged in, you know? Um, I felt embarrassed uh, that I wasn't doing more. And I'm in the streets, but I didn't have an answer for my, for my son, my nephew who would become my son. And here I, I was thinking I was making him more safe, taking him to this nice neighborhood, but now he was having to drive, ride his bike through an affluent neighborhood to a school where at any moment he could have been confronted in his dark skin, six foot one as a 14 year old, six foot six one, uh, could have put me in a position where I could lose, lose him. Uh, and so as I struggled with what to do, how to address him, how to deal with that question and going to protest, I said, I have to do something that adds to the conversation and that I believe in a, mean, in a meaning way. So I think it's important because it, it puts on, dis it, on display uh, the, the realities of, of police brutality and, and exploitation and subjugation that we're dealing with every day. And it also puts on display the fact that we're stuck in this loop where there is no answer. We talk about a conversation, but we never have the conversation. You know, whenever we, we see a, 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 a brown body decimated, we can, we can bet that they're gonna have some black person uh, on a press conference telling us not to, not to jump out of the window. You know what I mean? And we can bet that they're gonna show some police officers doing some kind of barbecue in a black neighborhood uh, and then they're going to pump up the sports to make sure we're distracted. And I just, you know, I believe that there are people in the streets doing great work every day. I'm just a filmmaker. This is just a fraction of the work that some of our fantastic sisters and brothers are doing. 
but I would be remiss if I didn't add to the conversation with a piece of art that at least says we need to wake up because if we don't, we, we don't, if we don't do something differently, we're just going to keep getting killed. And this, and this is going to be the legacy we hand to our children. Speaking of conversations, um, I know Spike Lee is uh, uh, presenting this film and that you guys had a conversation about the film after he was able to, to screen it. Uh, can you tell me a little about that conversation, whatever you can share about that conversation between you two? Yeah, well, Spike Lee has done for me what few uh, have had done for them in their careers. And that is, he has stood by me as an artist. He has uh, uplifted my ideas. Uh, he has encouraged me uh, in times where I was unsure. Uh, and he's left a legacy of work that I can look to for inspiration when it came to telling our story. What he's done for me specifically in this moment is when I made the film, uh, you know, as an artist, you make a piece of art and you don't even know if it's any good. You know, you're so close to it and you know what your intentions are, but you just don't know if it will be received, if you're missing the mark. And so the very first, first two people I showed this film were to were my two, you know, mentors in the space. Uh, and I showed it to them, the three of my, I flew to New York with the film in my hand and screened it for uh, Spike Lee and Steven Soderbergh. And uh, we screened it and at the end of the film, it was the day that the officers got off for the Eric Garner killing. And it was just an emotional room, you know, and Spike said, uh, this is before anything was seen, you know, they were everyone, we just sat and Spike was like, I will go to the edge of the earth with you with this film. He said, our people need this. He was like, we need to wake up. We, we have to address this. We have to figure this thing out. Um, he said, I made do the right thing and with a character, Radio Raheem, based on a real character, you know, 30 years ago, uh, you know, and here we are all these years later, still having the same conversation on the, and seeing this on the day where another man got killed by radio, like Radio Raheem. The next like, one. So, so that, that was, uh, that was that I know, you know, I don't know what the time is like, um, but I'll shorten my answers, but that, that he is my, 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 my mentor, my, my brother, my uncle, my, you know, my father figure in the game. And, uh, and he is giving me confidence that the art I wanted to make is art that we need for our people. How difficult, I mean, I feel like we're in a different age of um, getting films greenlit with the, with COVID and all the streaming services. There's, there's so much more type of content that we get to see, but following like all the controversy around Birth of a Nation, like how difficult was it to get this? I know you have Spike and Soderbergh, but was it like, Difficulties pushing back on this, especially like now, now with the social climate, it feels like it'd be like touch a goal. Do you want to do something on police brutality? Do you not want to do it? Like you know, how how do you feel like the reactions of the studios were in that? Paul Paul Robeson said, the artist's job, you know, the, the artist has to decide if he wants to fight for freedom or bondage. I've made my choice. Uh, that is my position. You know, I there's so many things you can't control. You can't control if people are gonna give you money, you can't control if people are gonna put your film on their platform. You can't control if they think it's relevant. You can't control if they think it's realistic. You know, there were people that, I made this film two years ago. You know what I mean? Like I made this film well before George Floyd. And there were people that were like, is it realistic? You know, is it really that bad? And, and it just hit me like art is the launch pad for, for our journey toward reconciliation and toward healing. And you can yell it off the mountaintops. These are the things that are happening in our community. These are the things that need to change and people ignore you. But if you put it in a film and you hold them hostage for two hours, they could come out of it saying, wait a minute, maybe I got this thing all wrong. So I don't really think, I think about the people. I think about my ancestors. I think about Harriet. I think about Marcus Garvey and Tucson and all the people that have to sit down and say, at what point does this stop? And what is my contribution to the solution? Rather than, you know, speaking to the darkness, how do I command the light? Um, and so for me, I, you know, I ain't the savior. This film ain't the savior. They, there are no magic bullets, but I will never let uh, um, a circumstance stop me from, you know, trying to make the world better for my, my children and your children and our children's children. Uh, that is yeah. our task as artists. So 
that's the only, you know, to control the things you can control. Yeah. I remember like our first interview was on uh, Great Debaters and you have Denzel acting and directing and that. And I, I wonder how do you navigate this space? Now you did Birth of Nation and this when you're doing, when you're writing and directing and you're starring in it. Like how difficult is it for you to navigate all of those items as an artist and still be able to control the flow of the film and everything else? Like, how do you, how do you do that? You know, uh, Denzel told me something when we were working out. Now I say this because you mentioned the great debaters. I asked him about directing in film school. And at this time I directed some short films and he said, Nate, you learn to do by doing. He said, it's the way it's always been for us. Uh, and something my, 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 my grandmother used to tell me, she says, you, you're, not, you're not given the luxury of being mediocre in anything you do. There's too much work that needs to be done. She said, most oftentimes white people, they get to just, all they got to do is show up. Um, and we, do, we just don't have that, 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 that luxury. So you just have to work harder than everyone else. You know, I'm not better than, than anyone, but I work very hard. I work very, very, very hard. So when I'm writing and I'm directing, I'm not thinking about the titles. Anyone that's ever worked with me knows that I will help the caterer put out the food. And at the end of the day, I'll put the chairs away and I'll carry the, carry the boxes for my grips. Um, I don't think of this industry as uh, a, a construct of, or a hierarchy where uh, the director gets to come in in a smoker's jacket and point his finger. For me, it has to get done because I have to do my little teeny part. You're a journalist, bro. Like you're doing your part. Like you're gonna, you are on record. You have your receipts. When, when it's your time to get out of this, this, this existence, you're gonna be able to say, I got my receipts. I was there every time something happened. I was showing up, I was asking questions. I was trying to get to the bottom of it. I was trying to uplift people that were doing the right thing. I was trying to add to the narrative of our, of our liberation. Not everyone's gonna be able to say that. You know what I mean? It's, it yeah. will be a collection yeah. or some of all of our parts that will get us to the place where we're ultimately free. Um, but that, that's the only thing that keeps us optimistic. The only thing that keeps me optimistic is knowing that brothers like you get up every day and do what you do. That keeps me going. Wow. I can't let you down. I got to do my part. Wow. I, I mean, and, I, and that that resonated with me in the film. I, I can't recall the, the actor's name that looks like Stokely Carmichael that's doing, that's the documentarian um, mm -hmm. in the film. But like when, <laughs> when, when you tasked it with like, you know, the story, you're here to tell this story. I felt that as a journalist. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was, that resonated with me. Um, let me, let me talk about some of these shots. Cause I, I was, I, some of these shots I've never seen on film. Like you have one shot where you're, where you're talking to your son, uh, to, to your son on screen about, uh, you know, how to handle the police. And he's talking to a friend or a cousin or something. And you, you have like a busy screen with a desktop and you have, the visual there and I was like that that is a unique shot like I mean like and, and then there's this shot where you're doing the by any means necessary um, I've, I've seen that I was like that's by any means necessary I've seen that I, I mean how how is it composing these shots and working I, I mean I'm sure you're working with the DP but like what what how did that add to the greatness of, of this film this project? Well, I, I am a stickler for a shot list you know it's just my process and when I write I, I write for specificity. Anything that you see in any frame is designed. You know, my, my cinematographers sometimes call me the set decorator, set decoration, decorator. He'll be like, all right, Nate has to go in and do set deck because I need to make sure the blinds look right, that there's the, there's the, the right pictures are on the wall. There's a scene, I don't want to give anything away, but there's a moment in the film that two moments that are so specific that tells you exactly what's going to happen. I tried to, in symbolism in the background through the way I've positioned different things, even colors, you'll be, if it went on a second watch, you'd be like, oh, that, you know what I'm saying? I think yeah. composition is critical when it comes to storytelling, just like in our lives, you know what I mean? And if I walk in, into my house at seven o'clock after work and I see, the couch cushions on the floor having been put into a, a fort and fallen down. And I see dishes on the table and I see a spill on the floor. I know right then that I'm gonna have to go get some flowers and bring them home for my wife. Cause she's had a hard day. 
and I already know what the energy of the room is going to be. The audience is the same. When the audience walks into a room, when you bring them into a space, every color, every sound prepares them for what they're about to receive. And if, they, and if that setup isn't right, you may miss them. The, you, the, the dialogue may be dope, the acting may be dope, but they may miss it. You know, so shot composition, being able to, and, and, and this whole film is about connecting with young people. It ain't ours no more, bro. It is not ours. We are older than King, Malcolm, all of them were before they died. We're older. It's, it's yeah. not even ours no more. Now it's on us to support the young people, which is why I had the desktop, you know? And if you look at even the files, this is a young person's desktop and him and his boy are talking and they know the history and they know, oh, the constitution. And it took an old head coming in and being like, none of that matters. Yeah, I, I, I'm a revolutionary, but I want you to come home, you know, and seeing yeah. how those generations intersect uh, sets the tone for where we're going. So yeah, everything's specific. You'll never see a frame in anything I do that is offhand. It, you know, before, I mean, we're, we're just a week past the Capitol protest. And before this, everybody would have been drawing parallels to, to George Floyd or um, there's so many names we could name. We could just list off a name of names. But there, there's a line in the film, and I want, I want to get it uh, right, where you said, uh, you know, why are we the only people that's asked to do stuff without violence? And I, I wonder, like, in light of what's happened in the last week, you know, how do you think this, this film is, is relevant even to other people's story, but, but beyond the police brutality? Because I, I think there's a lot of Americans that feel that way, whether we agree with them or not, feel the same way, you know, like how, how, how does the film bleed into these other themes that's going on that you didn't even expect? Cause like you said, this is two years ago when you made this film. Yeah. Um, you know, I hear a lot of people saying things like, uh, this is not who we are. Why is this happening? This is not who we are. I would contend that this is exactly who we are, which, and, and until we confront that, nothing's going to change. You know, I think this is a film about honest confrontation with the, the, the devastating reality that the policing that is happening in this country is killing us. And we're paying for our own demise. You know, I think that until we, it's like we're the only country that, have, that, is, that has had the type of, 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 of brutal and subjugating past without a reconciliation, without being like, all right, I mean, South Africa, right? Like, we got to fix this. I think at some yeah. point we need to sit down and figure out how we get past this. So this film will be a cautionary tale, but not something that happens in real life. You know, yeah. you can only take a, so many people's children before you get a reaction that you really don't want, you know? And, mm -hmm. and so, yes, I do think the film speaks to different themes, uh, but, I, but I also, like I said, I never want to discredit the work that's being done by our, our sisters and our brothers in the streets because they are doing the real work. My job is to throw a bit of gasoline on their fire. Because yeah. it's, it's, film is just a film and the themes are the themes, uh, but America is America, you know? Yeah. Uh, 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 showing images of, of police hugging little black kids doesn't stop us from getting killed. It doesn't change their training. It doesn't, it doesn't change the fact that you can be a well-intentioned black man that goes into law enforcement and then finds yourself within a couple of years with your baton out breaking a black man's legs or putting your knee on his neck because you bought into the, 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 the systemic uh, you know, infrastructure of, 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 of racism, white supremacy that perpetuates what we're going through. Again, you know, it's, for me, I'm not, I'm not the person that's gonna give uh, a complaint about anything I just want to add to the conversation. That's it. Let's yeah. add to the conversation and force the conversation, you know, as you saw in the film, and talk about the hard things. Uh, a lot of people also this week have been talking about, uh, I want to say former President Trump, but President Trump um, being canceled from Twitter and, and, and cancel culture. And I, I know, like, following your film, a lot of people were trying to you know, silence you. Like, what, what do you feel about this cancel culture? Is this something that we just have to deal with going forward? Is it a way to get out? I mean, like, how, how do you think about, you know, people trying to hold stuff, you know, you know I, think, what I'm I think we have to find a way 
as artists, you know, I just speak for me, to go up to the 10,000 foot view, you know? Uh, it's like when you're on the ground, there are things that are happening and there are trees around you, there are obstacles around you as you're trying to get to where you think that you were called to go. But then you'll go up in a plane, right? And you'll look down and you can see everything, you know? And you can see, oh my, well, that's where I was back there. That's where I am now. And that's where I want to go. And I think that through faith, you know, through humility, uh, constant introspection, you know, because I've grown in so many different ways, I, I try to live at the 10,000 foot view. So when things happen on the ground, I don't allow them to affect my every day. I say, well, if God is God and he has a destiny for my life, my goal is to just keep walking until I get there. Pick one foot up, put it down. Pick one foot up, put it down. Get as much wisdom from the people I love that love me as I can. Make my art, you know, be the best father I can be, be the best husband I can be, be the best revolutionary I can be. Um, one foot in front of the other and control the things I can control, you know. Uh, faith is a, is a big part of that. You know, go up to the 10,000 foot view. Um, look at your past and what God has brought you through, and then look, look forward with that same amount of faith. That if he's, if he's set me up to do this thing, to make films, then it doesn't matter that I don't have any money because I'm gonna make this film because it matters. And then this film made for nothing will hopefully impact people and touch hearts. I mean, all I need is one cop to say, you know, yeah. I saw this film and I didn't know it would resonate with me so much. And two weeks later I was out and there was a guy and he got out of his car really quickly. And I think I, in a different time, I may have been scared, and, but something made me hesitate and take a beat. And it come to find out that guy was just, you know, got out of the car quickly because of whatever reason. And, and he's walking around somewhere today. And I'm so glad that I didn't discharge my weapon. That's, look, if that happens, we win. That's yeah. it. That's that right. If one, and guess what? We may never even know that it happens, but I'm okay with that. I don't need no no shine and no juice off of it. If if this film causes one person to have a heartbeat that lasts longer, to be with his family a little bit longer, then it will be worth everything that I've ever gone through. With everything that, 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 that from birth to right now, it will be worth it. That's that's my goal. Yeah, you got a lot of great people behind you. It's Spike and your, and your PR team who, who I all love and um and but I also hear that the producers like got behind this and like said I want to help help fund people with passion projects. Mm -hmm. Cause Sorry. before we wrap, can you talk a little about you know the way that they've been supporting yeah this film and, and other films going forward? Yeah, it's I think that um you know when I pitched this film first to uh, to Rock Ben Amar, he's someone that you know he's a North African man. Um, he's very in touch with what's happening here, what's happening on the continent. Um, and we've had so many stories. He's Tunisian, so we've had many stories uh, about Hannibal Barca, the, the, the African general um, that led an army uh, against Rome. And, you know, he saw Birth of a Nation. He reached out to me and we, we developed a friendship. Uh, and I, I'm trying to remember which death it was, which murder it was. But he called me one day, he said, are you seeing this? I said, yeah, I'm actually working on a piece to kind of address it. And he said, well, what's the piece about? And I told him, he was like, my gosh, you know, like if that, you know, I said, it's 12, 12 angry men in dog day afternoon, you know, but taking over a precinct. He said, man, if, if that script existed, I would fund that today. I said, all right, well, let's go. You know what I mean? So I sent him the script, uh, we worked on it. He brought on Mark Burr and Mark Burr without hesitation said, this story needs to be told. Um, you know, uh, you know, Mark Berg has a, has a, has a, a black son, uh, an incredible young brother, and he just jumped on. And, and it was interesting how this story touched this man in North Africa, who's in the diet, is a part of the diaspora and sees what's happening here. It touched a man that has a black son and wanted him to be a part of it. And all of a sudden, here we are off to the races. And those are the two people that believed and said, you know, what can you make the movie for? And, uh, and I just, you know, there's, there's this young brother, this young Nigerian brother who's a teenager, who's a filmmaker. And he said something that stuck with me. He said, um, if, you, if you can't do it with less, then you can't do it with more. 
So it's like, we have to learn to use what we got. You know, when I made this film for very little, I shot iPhones, I shot, you know, uh, you know, a, 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 a Red, I shot an a Alexa, I shot Dash Cam, I shot uh, a, a Stick Up Cam, I shot, I mean, we had, at one point we had five cameras rolling, rolling at the same time. Um, but these, you know, these producers, these producing financiers believed in me. And, uh, and I was able to pull together my team of people who are scrappy, Lucas, Benkin, Zach Tangelov. These are people who are young, hungry, and they just want to tell stories that matter. Um, and that's, and that's what, and, and then, you know, Vertical. Vertical stepped up and said, we believe in this story. We want this story to be told. We think that there's an audience, but not only an audience, an ear. You know, like you got to imagine that George Floyd yeah. had it happen when the story was written or made. And, this ca and, and the Capitol wasn't, you know, stormed by insurrectionists. You know, this, we couldn't write this. This is God's plan. But if all these people yeah. don't climb on board uh, of this train with the sole purpose of collectively addressing issues that need addressing, then, then the story doesn't exist. And, 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 and we're in a different place. So I think that, as I said before, if everyone just does their part, there's no savior. I ain't nobody savior, man. I'm just an artist. I'm just a guy from Virginia that 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 throws this camera around and gives it to the people and hopes they can get something from it. You're a journalist. We have a very important job to do collectively. Everyone has a job. Yeah. Well, American Skin is definitely a classic. Like I said, I stand on this. It's better than 12 Angry Men. I, and I love 12 Angry Men. Yeah, that's I love 12 Angry Men. And but the but the way that this played out. It's better than 12 Angry Men. I'm, I'm very proud of, of the work you put into it and, and the stick to it. And, and you just not stopping, man, not letting anybody get in your way. Um, I want to make a massive Musa picture with you, but we could talk about that at, a, at a later about, time. Let's talk about <laughs> it. Look, I'm down yeah. for all of that, brother. I'm down for all. When, 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 uh, when I'm on my deadbed, hopefully I can say, I, hopefully I'm thinking like, dang, we got them all. We hit every single one. We made it. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, dang, we did that one too. That's my hope, brother. So we'll talk yeah. about it. All right, brother. All right, brother. Thank you very much. My pleasure.